here's what you start with and that's your end product. So today we're gonna to be converting the Nikon 20 millimeter f2.8. It's an AIS lens and this is the one that I haven't added to my kit yet. So I'm excited to add it to the, the arsenal. So you're gonna need your lens and we're gonna need our follow focus gears either from followfocusgears.com or from simmodlens.com. I like followfocusgears.com because it's in the name. We're going to need our 80 millimeter outer diameter front ring and this will help us to put our filters on all the same size whole consistent ecosystem this one is a knurled version and as you can see there's texture on the end and that's important because your map box will be able to grip onto this thing and actually really appreciate the way that it looks we have over here i can show you a different version of the same thing and as you can see it's just i think it's aluminum it doesn't have the knurled edge it's just smooth so Whichever one you want. Also along the same lines, this front cap came from Follow Focus Gears and I had a label printed here. It's not actually on there. But this one is from Simon and I really, really like this one better because as you can see, this one from Simon is just a lot more durable and it actually looks a lot better, looks a lot cleaner. And I think it's just made more properly. I would buy your front caps from Simon. We're gonna need our EF mount and this comes in a little box. This is the EF mount for Nikon F, do you? you have a few parts in here, some more screws. But this version is the Cine Pro Brass. And I don't remember if I ordered this one or not. I think they might've sent it to me because my shipment took too long, but I am pretty sure it's just better quality. Uh, it comes with some screws. And the reason I like this mod so much and the reason you should too is because this lens modding is so simple. You don't have to grind down any edges or anything like that. There's no crazy, crazy uh, steps to this. It's simply just two parts you place right on the native mount. We're gonna need our super secret grease. The reason we're paying for this from Simod is we don't want, when it heats up, we don't want the grease to splatter all over the sensor. That's what happens with these other greases that people are using on forums. So you get what you pay for it there. We're going to need some Q-tips to apply that to our aperture ring that's gonna be our resistance we're putting on our aperture ring once we declick it we don't want it flying all over the place we're gonna need a set of screwdrivers as you can tell I'm a big fan of Simon already they have my have my business for sure you can buy this separately from the other pack if you buy the EF mount they're gonna send you a free screwdriver magnetic tape screwdriver it's pretty great but this one comes with some Phillips this one comes with some flatheads as well as some tweezers and they're nice and color coded and that's just really fun. So we're going to need a microfiber cloth as well as probably some toilet paper or paper towels. I would use paper towels, we just ran out here. We're gonna need some Pancro, it's for lenses specifically. And then we're gonna get some lens tissue, also a blower, okay? So if you want to just mod your lens, you just need a mount, you need a lens and you need microfiber and some screwdrivers. You don't have to do all of the steps here, but this is how you will fully, truly mod out your lens completely. Aside from the aperture ring, we're just gonna do the follow focus ring this time. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. So first thing we're gonna wanna do is we wanna de-click our aperture. And before we do that, just gonna blow this off a little bit. Just get any dust off that bad boy. Fortunately, the person that I bought this from did a really great job keeping this lens just very nice and clean so I'm very appreciative of that so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take these screws off in the middle here so there's only three we don't want to drop these so make sure you just put them in a, a safe place I'm having a really hard time taking this screw out if I had a soldering iron I would heat it up for three to five minutes to dissolve the glue and there I do not have one on me so I'm going to use the included screwdriver it's just a tiny bit smaller than the one in the kit so we have the aperture ring right here we have this piece this here's the native mount right here I'm just going to place this upside down right here this controls the aperture so it slides right here and this moves to open the aperture. And when these are all combined together, they open the aperture. 
so we're gonna take this piece out as well. So the reason the aperture clicks is because of this metal piece right here. And this is simply just registering with the inner notches on the inside of this ring here. And that's why we have a, a clicky aperture. So it's pretty, pretty simple. We just have to unscrew these. Last time I did this, these were flatheads and now they are Phillips. So I guess there was a manufacturing change here. But you can also keep these screws and keep the little metal piece here if you ever want to restore your lens. The best part about this is it's not it's not a destructive mod. You can just place this back if you need to restore it, which I have no idea why you'd want to do that, but you can. Cheers. So now that that's off, we we can put the lens ring or the aperture ring back on and we see that it's perfectly smooth. There's nothing registering there. And the reason we want to put grease on it is so that when we change our aperture, your first AC changes the aperture, it's not going to just zoom right over to, you know, from 16 down to 2.8 or vice versa. We want to actually put some resistance on there. What we're going to do is we're going to apply some, some grease to this, this inner ring. That's where our Q-tips come in. So go ahead and grab, get your grease. Let's go for it. Gonna wipe the ends of this. I think I'm gonna actually apply some more. There's not as much resistance as I as I want on there, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply some more. That's nice. There's a lot of resistance there. Okay, here's what it looks like put back together once we have all those pieces back, but I'm gonna undo it again and show you guys how to do this. So we have our three parts here, this ring as well as the aperture ring as well as the mount, okay? So it goes one, two, three. So at this point, if you haven't already gotten grease on the glass in the back, congratulations. But I'm gonna go ahead and talk about what you should do if you do. So I actually got some right over here I had to clean. All right, so I'm gonna rip a piece off and I'm gonna fold it in, in just like this. What I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm not gonna ever spray the lens itself, okay? What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spray away from the lens, okay? So just like this, go ahead and spray. So I'm gonna do it away, just a single spray. And then you wanna be careful not to get oil on the cloth itself, but take it and start in the center and just work your way out just like that we're gonna go ahead and put this ring back on place that right here just be careful when you're putting these parts on sometimes they shift and move and it's really easy to touch the glass so we're gonna take the aperture ring there's a little lip right here and that's the piece that engages with this right here, okay? So I'm gonna put my finger on it because last time I did this, it popped up. It's easy to get oil and grease just like that. So you don't want that. That's how you know you did it once these pieces engage right here. So on the native F mount, this piece right here is what activates our aperture, okay? So we're gonna line those two up and don't tilt it too far because those pieces will fall out. So just line it up, okay? And then I'm gonna look for the screw holes and I found them and I'm gonna test the aperture. And there you go. It works. This is the first piece it is the flat piece. We have the EF actual mount on the side. I'm going to use the included screws. So mine came with two. I'm not sure if yours will, but 
we're gonna use the big screws. So technically, you don't need to keep the old ones that we have in our little container here because they provide you with, with new ones, which is really great. In case you are extremely clumsy and <laughs> lose all of them at the same time. I don't know how you do that. I'm gonna place this here. If you lose all of these screws, I don't know if this is, this is for you. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. That's just so smooth, which makes me so happy. There's no like, excess glue on there or anything like that. It's just fresh screws. So even if you strip those old ones, these are looking fresh, feeling fresh. Great, now this is nice and tight. So last part is we're gonna put the last part of the EF mount itself. We're going to line up Simod's logo with this black dot right here. So our aperture is able to move left to right. This black dot is always the top. And so this red dot on the top left will be to the side. Okay, so once we do that, it might feel a little weird, but once we do that, put these tiny little screws on these sides line up with these okay okay so very easy to strip so don't do that I'm gonna do one on one side and then a few on the other okay so you want to make sure the screws are going in straight mine kind of went in sideways so I'm gonna just redo this one cool. that one went in great and that is the EF Simod mount on the 20 I'm gonna test it on my black magic Feeling good? So it was giving me a little bit of resistance on my camera, so I'm gonna tighten this screw on the side. See how it's sticking up a little bit. Sweet, feels good. We like that. And our next step is to put the follow focus ring on the camera. This one comes in two pieces, basically because it won't fit on uh, by, its, by itself. So we need to put this initial piece on. This opens up and comes on there, just like that. Make sure it's aligned with with the rubber part of the gear. A lot of the times these rings are printed so tightly that's not gonna fit on there. So what you can do is either use a hairdryer or a heat gun. Fortunately, I have a heat gun right here. So you're just gonna heat the inside of the ring. There you go, there's your ring on there. Follow focus ring. And the last step is putting our front ring on here. So if you bought the right one, you should just screw on there really nicely. Just like that. Boom. That feels so nice. I'm so excited about this. And our front cap just slides on here perfectly. So there you go, there you have it. That is the lens modding conversion of the Nikon F to EF and this is for an AIS lens. The AI and AS are the same exact conversion, but here you go. And here's an example of some others that you'll find as well. Here is the 35 with uh, different parts. These, the ring is still from Follow Focus Gears. This is from Follow Focus Gears, but it's a 3514, and this just has the KNF concept on here. So yeah, there's this, some size comparisons. And then we have our 50 millimeter. 1.2, which is one of the most popular AI lenses right here. So yeah. So I hope this is helpful to you. If you have any questions on any of these conversions, like if you want to convert the 50 or 35 or even the 85, really any lens, let me know. I'd be happy to assist you with that. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this is useful uh, to your cinematography career. And thanks for watching. Share this with a friend and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.